everyone. This is the next installment on the Blenny and Gobi book that the Kulanaya Foundation is developing. And today we're going to get to learn a little bit more about some specific species of Blenny and Gobi. In this video, we are going to get to talk with Fiona Crouch and learn some more about some of the species of Blenny and Gobi that are going to be featured in the book. So Fiona, today we are launching a short video on our first of the book series, um, which is gonna be a compare contrast book. And we've chosen to focus on Blennies and Gobies. Yep, 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 yep. I think they're a good little fish, little characters um, to sort of focus the first book on. And as I say, you can find them in tide pools or rock pools, um, but then you can find them uh, in different habitats, in deeper water, all over the world, um, just different different types of species, but they all sort of have very similar characteristics. So I think it's a it's a good start. I, I feel really lucky because of all the work that you've done, all the research you've done, and because you're such an experienced underwater diver and photographer, you've gotten up close and personal with a lot of different species of these little guys. It's kind of it's great um, how we can use that. Um, in developing these books for um, children so they can learn um, as they're learning to read as well. So it's really cool. Yeah, and, and your photographs give um, a window into a world that unless you have scuba gear or you're really good at holding your breath, you don't get to see very often. So it's a great, it's a great opportunity to get to sort of get up close and personal. Do you have any today that we can look at that we could see some of the pictures yeah. that we could use during, in the books? Yeah, so I'll just um, share my screen. So can you see that? Yep. So I think, so this is a Tompop Blenny, um, and it's probably one of the most colorful Blennies we have um, in UK waters. And you see, it's quite a little cute character. Um, one of my favorites. I have lots of photos of these. And little Tompops, they're great. They, um, they live in little holes, you'll find them in, um, in tide pools or you can find them deeper down in, in wrecks. I can't quite remember where I took this, it might have been um, in the Channel Islands in a little beautiful place called Sark um, or it could have been in um, just off our, the coast here where I live in Plymouth. Um, there's a little wreck um, and it's got a boiler and they've all got little holes in the boiler um, and so you find a little, uh, a lots of uh, Tom Pop Blennies in there. What's the function of those little tassels? Some of it is breeding as well. So, you know, my tassels are bigger than your tassels. You get the common shanny, which I can show you a photo of in a minute, and that actually doesn't have the tassels, but it's still a Blenny. So not all Blennies will have tassels, but um, a lot of the species do. You know, like birds have really colourful feathers um, and they show those off when they're mating and stuff. I think um, uh, Tom Pots are a bit like that. So this is um, a little shanny. This is typically a rock pool species. So we call it a shanny or um, it's also called a common blenny. They're adapted as well, which is something we'll be discussing in the book, how they can actually just survive in a crevice out of the wall. They're really well adapted for, for being in um, tide pools. Um, and they're also very cute. And they could also change colour. And these guys, this is a little family which... Um, I've been visiting um, for quite a few years. So there's a little harbour just down a few miles from where I live and there's a big crack in the wall, <laughs> big gap there. And there's um, a little family of shannies that have been living in there. What is one feature we can use to compare blennies and gobies? And this is quite a nice photo because you can see it's dorsal fin, which in a blenny is one continuous fin. So now we know that blennies have one long dorsal fin. It makes us wonder, what about gobies? And what kind of dorsal fin do gobies have? So this is our goby. And I think this is a black goby. This one you could find in rock pools. We're going to do the difference between blennies and gobies. And so this is the biggie, isn't it? So the biggie is, you'll see there, that the dorsal fins, they have two. So now we know. Gobies have two separate dorsal fins, whereas blennies have only one. 
this is the one that's really skittish. This is a, a leopard spotted goby. They're a really cool little species. I think it might have been in Scotland. Are gobies more skittish than blennies? I think gobies are more skittish, yeah. And, and a lot of the blennies, you'll find them sticking out the holes like the Tom Pop. So they'll just, they'll be quite content at just sticking their head out. Now we've talked about two species of blenny and two species of goby that are found in nearshore colder waters. We're wondering about blennies and gobies that are found in warmer waters, such as coral reefs. When I've been lucky enough to dive in lots of places across the world, and as I got quite fascinated with these little guys, and they're called um, secretary blennies, but they generally will just sit there and then they'll probably just wait for little copepods, pods, something like that, to walk by in the water and then they'll come out and grab them and then they'll just um, stay back in their, in their hole. But I think I, what I love about these is I, I love the way um, the formation of the coral kind of goes in and then sort of surrounding the holes. The lemon goby, hmm, all good name. And they live amongst the um amongst the like staghorn corals and stuff so this was taken in the red sea um and again really skittish from our discussion with fiona we now know that an important feature to distinguish a blenny from a goby is to notice the dorsal fins this is just one example of how our books will help children by focusing on key features which help them to separate one kind of animal from another this is just one example of the kinds of important scientific skills that we can help children develop as they read through the book series. It's a really fundamental scientific thing to, to learn to notice those small details and to be able to see differences. And that's really how you get that knowledge. You get that sort of expertise. And so doing this compare contrast book and stopping and looking at those little features, you're really giving kids the opportunities to do exactly what scientists do all the time. So it's not just a literacy compare contrast text, but it's also like a really fundamental um, way of doing science. To be a good scientist, you, you spend a lot of time looking carefully and going back and checking and saying, oh, that is a goby. I know it's a goby because look at the dorsal fin, look at the break yeah. and look at the look at the teeth, look at the scales. Level. Um, it's really interesting when you start talking to um, people that do, you know, taxonomists that are looking at the finest details and I'm trying to distinguish between those different species. So it's one thing going it to a group, you know, but then to species level you then get it into the little tiny details and that's when it gets scary. And it, it is such a fundamental thing. It, you have to start there. You have to start at what makes this fish a blenny and what makes this fish a goby. And like you said, then as you get more and more experience and knowledge, then you start getting into the finer and finer details and these really interesting questions about the different kinds of species. And yeah, and I think it's just thinking about that detail as well, which I think is really important, which you can apply to lots of things. It's not just looking at fish, but it's kind of that whole also like questioning and not maybe taking something for granted because I think it's a, it develops a skill um, over time, which can be applied to lots of things, I think, which is which hopefully be um, uh, very advantageous. So. Yeah, yeah, and you use in a lot of different ways, not just in science, absolutely. Well, that's it, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I think, well, we, we are science biased. Right, <laughs> we are. <laughs> but I mean, that idea that you stop and you look closely. It, yeah, 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 it's observation. It, it, yeah, it's how you observe the world around you, I think. And, uh, and the smallest changes can make a big difference. And yeah, so, so yeah, it's, um, it's good to... I think it's a good skill. So hopefully we can bring that kind of across in our Blenny and Gobi spot the difference. Yeah, it's Look. one piece. We're doing what our little part. Well, we'd like to think so. <laughs> okay, that's about it, everyone. And I hope you enjoyed to see a little bit about the Blenny and Gobi book and learn about these wonderful fish and see these amazing images that Fiona 
um, has been taking. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to keep in touch, you can click the link below to our Patreon site. You can join our community and you'll get regular videos and updates as we work on these books and other ocean conservation curriculum. Take care.